Live, it's the Bison Football Show. Valley News Live and Gate City Bank present the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. We were out there for four, two quarters in the first half, beating the hell out of each other. So it was, you know, they did a nice job driving that field, and we needed to counter, come back with our offense, and we didn't. And that's, you know, and then just in this environment, you know, you get that energy going in there. That, that helps them a bunch. So that's where we needed to counter punch right there, and we didn't, we didn't at that time. Yeah, the dome was rocking. That was Northern Iowa coach Mark Farley. The trend continues. Nobody can stack up to the Bison for four full quarters. Big win for NDSU over Northern Iowa. Head coach Chris Kleiman joins me on set. Uh, 100 wins for the Bison this decade. Such an impressive stat. But really, when it boils down to it, this was a good game against a good team and a really solid win. Yeah, it really was. And, and hats off to the crowd. The crowd was electric. Uh, Yesterday, our kids could tell they really fed off the crowd, and uh, it caused them a bunch of problems, I know, with protections on, on their offensive line, and we were able to get after the quarterback. Oh, this defense is just really locked in, too, aren't they? Yeah, they really are. Great job by Coach Ince and the staff of, of just doing some different things and not showing the same thing on a week-to-week -week basis. And, and we have a lot of versatility on defense with a lot of players shuffling in and out, and, and everybody's contributing. Well, there was some adversity in the first half. Let's roll the tape, look at it. The Bison won the toss, forced a three and out, so they get the football. And you were moving the football early in this game in the first half, I thought. Yeah, we really were. I, I liked some of our openers that we had, and, and we were able to get a crossing route to Shep that uh, uh, was a big play on third down. How about Desmond Kane too? He's just kind of waited his turn, and he got an opportunity early in this game. Yeah, he really did, and, and he's a good football player, and, and we have a lot of good wide receivers. I was really happy to see him make a big play. He's a great, great kid. Third and six. Here's some of that adversity. There's a turnover here down by the goal line. Yeah, they do a good job changing their coverage up against our empty set, and uh, they make a big play. You know, another thing about the early part of this game, I thought, even though uh, points weren't going up, you were winning the field position. Yeah, we really were. That was probably the frustrating thing is we get a really good uh, return here by Shep and uh, get inside, I think, their 25 and, and have an opportunity to put points on the board, and we just don't do it. We just missed some opportunities in that first quarter. Yep, a lot of good linebackers in the league. Jared Farley, the coach's son, is one of them. Yeah, really good play. They, do, they have really good guys up front, good players up front, and then you see they come on and make a big sack. We get in field goal position here. Big Adam Reth, he's 99. He's a horse up front. He blocks it. Yeah, he's a really good football player. They, they, you know, they always have one of those dominant defensive uh, linemen every year, and this year it's him, and, and he made a great play. You know, their offense came into this game with a little momentum, didn't they? Yeah, they really did. They've been playing really well the last two weeks because they've been able to run the football, and uh, we were able to slow that down, which made the passing game that much more difficult for them. Here's some of that running game. This guy has a low center of gravity, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a good runner. Uh, he's hard to bring down, doesn't take a lot of, a lot of negative plays, and uh, I was impressed with him as a player. Really good blitz call right here. Yeah, great, and great timing of the blitz, and they try to cut Nick, and you're not going to cut Nick, and uh, the quarterback tried to scramble out, and then great job. We talked about it. We had to get some strips, and he strips the quarterback on the sack. Levi Jordan, another field goal, another block for 99. Yeah, he does a good job just blowing through the A-gap, and, and we had to get a correction there because uh, there's six points that uh, we could have had. They felt like they had a little momentum, and they have a nice tight end group. Yeah, they did. They ran a little pick route here, and, and we didn't fight through the pick, and uh, they make a big game. You know, Caleb Butler has had a, a nice little run the last couple of games. He gets a big sack here to stop any momentum. Yeah, really good job on an inside slant move by Caleb. Another different blitz that we brought, and uh, uh, I'm really happy the way Caleb's playing. They had a really good punter. He pins us at the seven, and they get another turnover. Yeah, we just missed this one. Uh, it gets tipped, and, and the worst thing that happens is the balls get tipped, and then that's usually what happens, and they get the, the big interception and, and have it in our territory. Again, the defense did a nice job. They get a few yards here by Way Miller. The umpire kind of takes him out here. He trips over the line, and uh, but they were moving it a little bit, but the defense bowed their neck. Yeah, they've been doing a good job with that, and we're trying to always uh, prevent the sudden change, and um, they do a nice job here and yep. uh, find Fountain, who's a really good receiver. Yep, they did end up getting into the end zone on this drive, so it is seven to nothing. Uh, and right now they have a little momentum. They almost get a tip here, but another masterpiece by RJ. Yeah, what a great catch. They brought pressure again. It was balls tipped, and, and RJ sticks his hand out, makes another epic RJ catch. Six minute stretch of punts here until this play. This really flipped the momentum of the game. Yeah, they started in an empty set and, and shifted back to the backfield and, and threw quick and Robbie read the eyes and that was a big lift for our team. Yeah, it really was. Tied the game at seven.
now the defense kind of pins their ears back a little bit. And I'll tell you what, Marquise Bridges is starting to make some plays. Really proud of, of Marquise. Uh, made a couple really good open field tacklers. And like we talked, that's a really good running back in space. Levi Jordan was recovering fumbles, but he also got a big sack here. Yeah, they had the protection sent the right way, and, and Levi just beat him. And a uh, great job of getting the sack. Uh, Levi's playing very well. It's fun to watch him, the kid from Dickinson. Our NODAC insurance halftime stats. It was tough sledding out there. 70 yards for you and I, 94 for the Bison. Couple turnovers uh, by both teams. It's going to be a fun second half to dissect. Before we get to that, though, on the Gate City Bank hot seat is Nate Tangway. Nate, what is the most enjoyable thing you did this past summer? Uh, I went to San Diego uh, to visit a buddy from my hometown. He's going to be a Navy SEAL. Um, he starts BUDS August 8th, I think. Wow. So, yeah, it's a pretty exciting time for him, but I would say that was the coolest thing. That's really cool. Okay, tell me something cool about your hometown, which is McGuanago, Wisconsin. Uh, I would just say it's pretty peaceful when I go back to my uh, house. It's a nice neighborhood. I really enjoy going back and just being with my family. All right, phone usage. Do you like to text or talk more? I would rather just call and get it over with every single time. All right, the fans have a question for you. If you had to give up movies or video games, what would you give up? Video games. I wouldn't have a life without movies. I think I watch a movie every single day. So, If you get $10 million handed to you, what would you buy first? Uh, beach house, and I'd make all my friends rent it out for me. Or rent it out for me, yeah. <laughs> what makes a great leader? Uh, I would just say a guy that you can rely on at all times. If you can call him up and you need help with something, that he'll be there for you. So, I mean, loyalty, I would say number one. Okay. How about that new locker room? What do you like most about it? It doesn't smell. Okay, that's the old one was smelling pretty bad at the point, so I'm really happy they ripped that up. That's a, that's a great point. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what does the tradition of Bison football mean to you? You've been around a while now. What's it mean to you? I mean, you know, a lot of people say brotherhood and everything. And, I mean, it's just a tough question. It's just something I can't put into words. It's, uh, it's more than words, and I just think the friendships I've made here are going to last a lifetime, and I just would have to say that that's a thing because I never thought I'd really find that anywhere, and I did here. So I'm just really thankful that that happened. All right. Thanks, Nate. Yeah, cool. Coach, you went into half knowing you were going to get the football coming out, much like last week. Same plan, I'm guessing, as last week. Uh, put an epic drive together. Yeah, absolutely. We weren't going to panic in the locker room. We had to make some adjustments. Uh, it was a defensive battle, and, and uh, we thought we could wear them down, and the challenge was to the offense to uh, get some rhythm going, and we were able to do that in the second half, and the defense, the big challenge was continue to create turnovers. Yeah, no question. Let's roll the tape in the second half here, and uh, this first drive, it really turned the game against Western Illinois, and it kind of did in this one, too. Yeah, really good job, uh, early play action down, and, and good back shoulder throw uh, by Eason. Great catch by Dallas Freeman. And Bruce really started to churn out yards here in the second half. Yeah, we kind of switched up, went a little bit more on the perimeter, and, and we were able to get a good gain here and, and get us uh, inside the 25. How about Ty Brooks? Such a change of pace. He's really explosive. Really is, uh, and, gr and great patience there and bouncing it outside, and he's such a... Uh, great, great quickness, great speed, and gets in the open field like that. He's really tough to bring down. That was a great move right at the five there. Good for Ty. Hey, Nick DeLuca was just a, a man amongst boys in this game, wasn't he? Yeah, once again, they turned the protection, and Nick just beat the, the guard. And then what a heads he played to strip it away, and then Levi was on the spot again. Yeah, Levi, Jordheim, Johnny on the spot. Uh, big third down play here. Uh, you're in field goal range. They do make a play here, but you're going to get three points and make this a two-point uh, or a two-possession. Yeah, that was critical for us to get points there, and, and uh, uh, Cam came in and, and got a big kick, and now we're up 17-7, to and uh, by no means is it over, but we have that cushion of two scores. Yep, this is a key part of the game right here. They moved the chains very little in this game, but here's another 13 from Way Miller. Yeah, almost stripped it out there, Nick. Almost got a big strip, but uh, we didn't give up the explosive play, and that was what was so key. And we knew they were going to take some deep shots in this game. Yeah, they had to. They weren't going to just keep uh, nickel and diamond, and they went uh, downfield. And, and great job by Troy catching it at the highest point against a really tall receiver. Yep, so you're backed up uh, in your own end here, though, and watch Bruce Anderson move the pile. Yeah, this is really critical for us to not be pinned back here and be able to get a first down or two, and we're able to do it. What a big run, and great job by the Rams of continuing to push that pile for a big game. It's like a rugby play. It really got the crowd into it, too. Next play, powers for 13. Yeah, once again, we're just running power football, and now we're almost out to the 30-yard line, and we were able to switch that field position. Yeah, no doubt, and uh, so the defense back out there, and they were just relentless as we moved to the fourth quarter. They weren't allowing anything, even screens. No, great job tackling on the perimeter, I thought, by our corners. Really good play by Marquise, and a good job by Levi cleaning it up. 
Still 17-7, so this is a key play. A huge mental error by Northern Iowa. They jump off sides, give you a first down, new life for the offense, and they really march after that. Yeah, they really did. Uh, they were going to try to come and block the punt, and they just got a little over-anxious. Over really good play here by Easton, scrambling around and, and making a big first down. Once again, flipping that field position. And they get a little frustrated here. Uh, Could have been a flag right there, and, and there's going to be one coming up right here. They're just totally frustrated, and the Bison just moving right down the field. Yeah, really good uh, crack uh, block there by Dimitri Williams. Does a great job of springing Ty loose. And here's a beautiful ball by Easton. He had the two picks in the first half, but he's so uh, resilient. Oh, yeah, and somebody right in his face and put it where only RJ could get it. And RJ goes and gets it at the highest point. It was good coverage, and RJ just made the play. We did miss the point after, so it's 23 to 7 at this point. And this this young Tuska, Derek Tuska, look at him. Yeah, great job stripping the football out. And that was one good thing is our defense was was fresh. They they were weren't on the field a bunch the second half, so they really laid their ears back. Did look great at job. Zai. Wow. Yeah. He gets the outside, he's fast. Yeah, really got great speed and explosiveness. And he doesn't have a lot of film on him, so people don't really know what to expect. We just see it every day in practice. Yeah, no doubt. Bruce finishes it off here for a touchdown. Yeah, that was really critical for us to get that score and uh, take it on a long drive after they made the mistake on the penalty. There's a big play here and we won't make you comment on it but it's a targeting on Jabril Cox. Uh, it was it's a football play. Uh, he was kicked out of the game. He won't be able to play the first half next week. I, I think it was a bad call but we'll just move on from there and uh, he won't be able to play first half next week. Darius Fountain does get a touchdown right after that. Too. Yeah, he's a, he, Fountain's a really good player. He's six foot three and he goes and gets it at the highest point and uh, uh, they did. They went in and made a play. Yes, they did. But Caleb Butler really sews it up. That was kind of a garbage touchdown for you and I. The Bison had control of this game, and Caleb finishes it yeah, off. Great job by Caleb, just beating the tackle with speed on the edge and, and gets a big sack. What an impressive performance by the Bison on our Nodak Insurance final stats. 30 to 14 is the final. That's a really good win. Look at the total yards. Northern Iowa only had 157, one of the best defensive efforts of the year for NDSU, and that's saying something because they're fantastic every week. And again, five takeaways plus three in the turnover margin. That's really fantastic. Let's hear what the players had to say after the game. You understand that that's a really good unit going out there, and uh, they're going to fly around and uh, and make plays, and we have all the faith in the world in them, and uh, they came up really big for us time and time again today. We just got to keep feeding off the, off the energy and the, the plays we make and keep moving forward because, you know, like the sky's the limit, I think, with this defense, and as long as we continue to play at the level we do, we'll be successful. Both those turnovers on the first half were on me, obviously, and so uh, it was just a matter of kind of getting in a rhythm and uh, getting back to what we were doing and uh, running the football, controlling the line of scrimmage, and then being efficient, uh, throwing it. And so uh, guys did a really good job executing in the second half. I know I've been out most of the season, and I'm, I'm a competitive dude, so it just, it just felt good to finally get out there and get some touches and make some plays happen. The bottom line is we executed better and, and got in a rhythm, and uh, defense keeps giving you short fields and, and taking the ball away. Uh, you're going to get points. No doubt. Well, back to Code Green for the NODAC Insurance Player of the Game. Robbie Grimsley continues to elevate his play, and it was this pick six that really flipped the momentum of this game over the weekend. Robbie read it perfectly. Solid game all around, though, with six tackles, a tackle for loss to join this pick six. Robbie and Coach Green really anticipated some things in this matchup. Yeah, I know we were really getting after it. We were excited for this one. You know, coming in, they were going to give us their best shot, and uh, we thought we had a, a good chance to get some turnovers, get some sacks, and bring pressure, and uh, it ended up working out. We, I mean... We were just getting after him. It fed off our own energy throughout the whole game, so it worked. Coach Robbie played well. Nick DeLuca played well. This defense in general was just really locked in. Yeah, they were all phases of the game on defense, and everybody played and everybody contributed. Uh, I mean, Robbie's so versatile. He plays safety for us. He plays inside linebacker some in some sets. He's playing outside linebacker for us, and uh, he's playing at a really high level, and he's playing really with a lot of confidence. You know, I think an interesting stat line uh, so far this season in the four ranked teams that we have played, the first halves have been pretty even, but you look at the dominance in the second half. Even at Eastern Washington, up nine, outscore them 21-3. It's tied against Youngstown, down two against Western. Look at the second half, though. 75-24 in the four ranked games that we have played. Talk about that a little bit, Coach. Uh, what you do at halftime, your, your philosophy, 
how you guys make adjustments and the dominance in the second half. Well, it's trying not to panic at halftime. We get everybody's best shot, and, and you have to be able to adapt and adjust and, and see what they're, what what we're seeing differently than we saw on film. And, and once again, you credit Coach Kramer for making sure that the guys uh, have an unbelievable offseason, unbelievable uh, in-season uh, strength and conditioning program, and you just try to, you know, out, just outman people for four quarters, and uh, our guys always believe they have an opportunity to win. And, and we get everyone's A game, and sometimes it's hard to do that for four quarters, especially against real physical brand of football. Yeah, it really is. You can wear people down yeah. a little bit, and uh, if we're not on the field, that's the other key is defensively, we haven't been on the field for 70-plus plays. We've been on the field for 50 to 55 plays, and so you're usually really fresh, and that's on offense, uh, being able to manufacture some first downs and stay on the field, change the time of possession and defense uh, playing fresh. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, how about uh, with Lance Dunn out, Bruce Anderson, we're going to look at some plays of him, but what a horse. And really in the last three games against physical teams, running uh, teams, uh, 16 carries, 21 carries, 26 carries, that's 63 carries in the last three. He's just a workhorse. He, he really is, and he'll get continue to get better the more reps he gets. I think it's great that we have kind of that change of pace back with Ty uh, that uh, can spell Bruce and Bruce is so good in the throwing game he's such he's so good at protections that uh, uh, you know we we knew we were going to rely on him and he had uh, 20 plus carries and did a really nice job yesterday yeah and these are against the last three teams have been very physical at stopping the run and Bruce has been just a fantastic workhorse you know you look at the running back situation Lance not available Cofield out, Purifoy out, but here's the three guys right now. Nice change of pace between Bruce and Ty. And Seth Wilson, you did pull the red shirt on him, so moving forward uh, in the meantime here, it's these three guys, really. Yeah, it really is, and, and we just this week started to in integrate Seth into yep. the offense, and so you'll see more and more of Seth uh, in the weeks to come. But, uh, you know, right now, those are the guys we have uh, on the football team that are healthy, and those are the guys are going to play. And really good ones uh, and nice, like I mentioned, change of pace there. And let's talk about Seth Wilson a little bit. Uh, what do you like about him, and what do you see uh, on scout team and now that he's playing too? Yeah, well, he's got great speed. He's got great quickness. Uh, he has really good hands out of the backfield, so we can use him in that uh, respect. And he's just now learning how to run the power play, learning how to run some of the, the schemes that you only saw during fall camp. But uh, really competitive guy, really reminds you a little bit of Ty as far as yeah. uh, he's a guy that really likes to compete. And uh, I know he'll get more and more comfortable, and we'll give him some more touches. No question. Uh, hey, there's still some guys injured. They're rehabbing. We're going to check in with their progress. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. Every team has injuries, and the Bison have had their fair share. The difference with the Bison is there is little drop-off when the backups come in. But we have not forgot about the playmakers who are currently going through the rigors of rehab. Alex Egan has this week's Olaf Anderson construction feature story. So hard over the summer and in the winter and then can be taken away instantly. I think that's the hardest part. Defensive end Greg Menard saw his season end before it even started. A torn ACL in fall camp has sidelined the preseason All-American. His career is not done. He'll take advantage of an available red shirt. But now the real work is happening, rehabbing his surgically repaired knee. I'd say my goal every day is just to get back healthy and be stronger than I was before. That's kind of my mindset is just come back and be the same me but better. The road to recovery is often lonely. Unfortunately, Greg has teammates going through the same process. Three other Bison have suffered torn ACLs this season. Redshirt freshman Dylan Raiden suffered his injury in week one, just 15 plays into his college career. It's a humbling experience. I can look at things from a different perspective. I can use this opportunity to learn the playbook better, learn other positions that I don't know. Now Dylan is looking at Greg as a benchmark for the progress he's ready to see. The two live together in the mornings and rehab side by side in the afternoon. Watching him being able to do the stuff he's doing, he's like two and a half, three weeks ahead of me, and just seeing what I'm going to be able to do in the next few weeks has helped out so much. Right now, both athletes are still on track in their recovery time, typically six to nine months from surgery, and both should be back on the field making plays when 2018 rolls around. For the Bison Football Show, I'm Alex Egan. Keep up that hard work, guys. We look forward to seeing you back on the field next year. Well, this week's Peterson Farm Seed Future Crop of Bison is another local big man. The West Fargo Packers had the best player in North Dakota last year, and he now is wearing the Bison uniform. Zach Willis is a big-framed offensive lineman currently redshirting. Jim Kramer, no doubt, is fine-tuning that big frame. Zach has a great attitude and a bright future. Well, it was kind of 
a big chalk coming in and I was splitting reps with the practice squad during fall camp and uh, at center and then now uh, Carson Shonen got moved up with the one so I'm taking every rep and uh, it, that's just progressed me because it's just an opportunity for me to hone my craft in a little bit and work on it against the, the best defense in the country and it's definitely a, a good opportunity to make myself better every day. Coach, another local kid who uh, really is proud to be a part of the Bison, and uh, what do you like about his future? Well, we're so excited to have Zach in the program. He's going to be a really good football player, and, and he knows he's going against the best. He's going against Steidel and Grant and Nate and Blake. He's going against those guys every day, making himself better, and uh, he's doing a great job in the weight room, doing a great job in the classroom, and another West Fargo kid that we're really excited about. Yep, Tyler Roll started it all from the Packers, and here comes Zach Willis. Hey, a big game this week, Dakota Marker Week. Buckle up for that. We'll talk about it. Stay with us. Well, Coach, if we look at the Missouri Valley standings right now, the three teams left for the Bison are two, three, and four. So the gauntlet continues. It, it sure does. And uh, it starts this week uh, down in Brookings. And uh, uh, there's no, it just goes from one to the next. And so that's why you just focus on the week in front of you. And this week it's the Jackrabbits. No question. And this matchup, uh, it's always a fun one. Uh, there's a lot of meaning to it with the Dakota marker. Uh, they got the marker last year in Fargo, so the Bison players talked to them on the radio after the game. They're fired up uh, to get this back. This is this is really a matchup where there's no motivation needed. No, the guys are going to be ready to play. Yeah. It's, a, it's a road game, and uh, I know there will be a big crowd, and so uh, it'll be a fun one for our guys to play, and, and we have to have a great week of preparation. And they've kind of got it rolling a little bit the last couple of weeks. The offense has kind of got unhinged a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if I think maybe Goddard was injured a little bit from what I heard. Now he's back healthy, and uh, no question that they have a lot of explosive players on, on offense, and uh, the key to us is being able to keep their offense on the sideline, and yeah. that's something that uh, uh, if, if you're going to have success against those guys, that's what you got to do. And it's what we did in the playoffs last year. We'll look forward to it this week. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. Certainly, uh, the Bison Radio Network will be fired up, and uh, we'll have all the uh, television coverage for you as well on NBC North Dakota. The Bison are 8-0. Enjoy it, everyone. Big game this week. We'll talk about it next Sunday.